Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more History Matters, this time why wasn't France carved up after Napoleon was defeated, a short animated documentary. This is something I have wondered about, and all the way back in high school I took AP European History, and I feel like we talked about this, but I can't remember the reasons why. Oddly enough, when I took, uh... A British Imperial History class. We did not spend time on the Napoleonic Wars. Um, we kind of skipped right over those. So, and then I didn't take any French uh, history classes. So, I have no clue. And I don't even really have any guesses as to why they didn't. Uh, maybe Russia... Uh, Russia, Austria, Spain, maybe they all felt that if they carved up France, then that would give too much uh, uncontested power to the British. Maybe they kept France whole and not carved up be as, a, as a means of, you know, being there to potentially keep Britain, you know, in check somewhat later down the line. That's like the only guess I potentially have for it. Uh, but I doubt, I doubt that's the reason. I did the, uh, nah, there's no way that's the reason. So, let's go ahead and dive in. When you start a major European conflict and get defeated, you'll often lose territory as a result. In 1789, France looked like this. There was soon a lot of warring, one Napoleon, and just over 25 years later, it looked like this. Not a whole lot different. And given the destruction and embarrassment that Europe's other powers suffered at the hands of France, why wasn't it punished more? Why didn't the victorious allies carve up France? So, as many of you will know, France expanded rapidly in the wake of the French Revolution and- So, I, I mean, I guess, if you look at it from that perspective of what Napoleon conquered and technically, I guess, integrated, <coughs> Right, integrated this part. You know, he had Italy. So I guess if you include that, technically France was carved up. Um, but maybe they felt. Uh, oh, another reason could just be uh, they felt that if they were too strict on France, well, I, they restored the monarchy. That was their ultimate goal: was restoring the Bourbon uh, monarchy. Um. Oh, maybe, man, I don't, I, I got no, I, I'm really stumped as to a guess here. And peaked at this size. Naturally, once Napoleon was dealt with, France lost most of its gains, but was allowed to keep a few conquests. That was until Napoleon returned. Yeah. After his second defeat, France lost these territories further. The French border regions were then occupied, whilst the Congress of Vienna, called by the victorious powers to decide what was to be done with France and her allies, was ongoing. It was decided that France wouldn't be dismembered or have large swathes of land taken from it. Okay, so I gotta share this. I feel like I've shared this before on this channel, or I've shared it on stream, perhaps. Um, if you ever check it me out over at Twitch, which by the way, I might start streaming on the gaming channel because Twitch has been making a lot of idiotic decisions. It's just that also YouTube kind of sucks for streaming. So like, I don't know, I want to stream, but there really isn't anywhere to stream. There's nowhere to go. There's no place with like good, you know, discoverability like Twitch used to be. Twitch now sucks ass. Anyways, um... In AP European history, back in high school, ten, nine years ago, it's not ten yet, <laughs> almost ten, um, uh, we, uh, we did a Council of Vienna, a mock Council of Vienna. We were split up into teams, right? We were split, like, uh, there weren't enough people in the class to everyone so we had a britain we had an austria i think i was on the austrian team um yeah i was on the austrian team we had a prussia uh and we had a russia we did not have a france um and of course Fran because of the lack of kids right i think our teacher didn't want to have a, uh, have a couple people assigned to france because france would get you know probably get ganged up on um anyways uh and what essentially was supposed to happen is that we come up with these ideas um, and then 
we share our idea, our, our uh, amendments, and essentially it has to be a, a two-thirds vote, um, right? Uh, majority vote. Um, and so I was a little shit. <laughs> um, I, we ganged up on Britain. Britain, uh, we forced Britain to agree to, uh, we sent, I don't think we gave Britain anything. We essentially made Britain, um, give up, uh, we made, uh, free trade, like, free maritime trade. The British do not have rule over the seas. Um, <laughs> we forced them to agree with that. It's like, we're, we're having the Council of Vienna to deal with post-Napoleon here, and we're making the British agree to something. <laughs> Even though, really, the British are the reason Napoleon was ultimately defeated. Although you could argue Napoleon may have probably ended up getting defeated by himself um, without the uh, military support of the British, blah, 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 whatever. But, yeah. And then also through that, uh, I was a fucking little scheming bitch. Uh, I secured Austria, a, a, a port here on the Adriatic. Uh... I think I agreed to like German unif I think we agreed to like the possibility of earlier German unification for Prussia. Um and then I think for Russia I can't remember what we agreed for Russia. We gave something to Russia, but I can't remember. Oh, we might have given we might have ceded more of Poland to Russia. That might have been it. It might have been I think I think I remember. I think uh, Prussia and Russia agreed to like. Uh, uh, oh, I remember what it was. Yeah. So, because Poland was you know made like independent by France by Napoleon and stuff. Um, uh, Austria, we Austria, Prussia, and Russia, the three of us, came together and we're like, all right, how do we want to split up Poland here? Uh, and essentially, I don't think I. Either Austria, either we gave, either we didn't take anything because we were like, we'll take a warm water port in the Adriatic, uh, so we're no longer landlocked. Uh, Russia and Russia, you guys get split Poland between you two, and then you guys agree with Austria to revoke the British uh, dominance over the oceans. I think that's what it was. It's been so long, though, I can't remember, but God, it was a blast. Those kind of those kind of things uh, in history class are what make history class so much fucking fun. <laughs> Being little shits scheming against each other as our own countries and stuff. Anyways, yeah. Back, to give to anyone this. else. This wasn't exactly a unanimous decision. The coalition powers fell into two groups. The first was the punish France camp. Yeah. This included Prussia, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Savoy, and to a lesser extent Austria whereas the other powers were in the let's not be hasty camp. This included the United Kingdom, Russia, and unsurprisingly, France itself. <laughs> and this division was something that the French representatives led by Charles-Maurice de Talleyrand were able to use to France's advantage. Prussia gained this from the Congress. Its original hopes were for this, but Talleyrand was able to convince the British and the Russians to pressure Prussia to accept these lands along the Rhine, which notably included this piece of France proper. This kept the Russians and the Austrians happy, gave Prussia some very rich land to the west, and was exactly what the French wanted. So why? Why willingly give up some of your own land? Because the French were convinced the peace wouldn't last, and that these lands would be hard for Prussia to maintain, meaning that in a future oh. war, France could win them for itself. This never happened, but it was an interesting idea. The Netherlands... Damn, that's some attempt at 5D chess there. ...and Savoy were also countries which wanted extra lands from France. The Netherlands had hoped for this, but got told that their annexation of the former Austrian Netherlands and rule over Luxembourg would be enough, so shut up. <laughs> Savoy, despite not doing anything, was given this land at the behest of Austria, who was busy trying to create an Italian confederation much like the German one, which conveniently it would also run. Except that the whole Italian confederation thing fell flat, but it was at least a good effort. Everyone went along with this because the Netherlands and Savoy were supposed to be mid-sized buffer states to keep France contained. And so, the only other state that wanted French land was Switzerland, which had hoped to be given all of this. They only got this, connecting Geneva to the rest of the country. And the reason was that they had no major powers on their side since none of them would gain anything from an expanded Switzerland. <laughs> and so what about the rest? Well, for the UK, Russia, and to an extent Austria, there was one primary concern. The balance of power and maintaining... Yep, okay, yeah, balance of power, uh... 
Okay, so I guess I was kind of sort of right uh, with the um, second thing uh, that I said later on. Uh, balance of power. I don't know why I was blanking on that. Yeah, it's so fucking obvious now that it, <laughs> now that it's stated. I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. I'm like, damn. Oh, brain. Brain meltdown today. Monarchical government in Europe. Austria wanted a strong France to counter Prussia and Britain. Russia wanted a strong France to counter Prussia, Austria, and Britain, and Britain just didn't want to have to deal with the continent anymore. Yeah. And carving up France meant that no one would get what they wanted. Because if France lost a lot of territory, its recently restored monarchy would probably be overthrown again. It's yeah. also the reason why during Napoleon's return, the coalition didn't declare war on France, but on Napoleon. The restored King of France was an ally against Napoleonic and Republican ideals, and thus stealing all of his land afterwards wouldn't have been cool. In the oh. end, it was the coalition's sus Technicality. suspicions of each other that meant that France needed to remain strong and unified. Meaning that unlike in the wake of other great wars in Europe, major territorial losses were off the table. I hope you enjoyed- And that was why France was not carved up after Napoleon was- Napoleon was defeated. A short animatic documentary by History Matters. This- this was fantastic. The amount of context uh, History Matters was able to fit into this three-minute video, phenomenal. They they did a great job. Um, I really got nothing to add here at the end. This was just fantastic. I really, I really enjoyed this one. I feel like I got a cough or something. The but I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.